Welcome to Jalass Set News, the like top stories in cryptocurrency and assets, and break it down to bite-sized pieces. Today, everything is on the up and up, and there's more stories to prove it. 20 billion in crypto under custody, Coinbase sees explosion of capital. We're gonna get into how much explosion actually is happening and what the investors or the institutional investors are doing also. Good news, the XRP army, there's going to be support from Binance and Bitstamp. Also, don't forget it's going to be on Voyager, so we'll take a look at the intricacies of what's happening. South Korea does the smart thing and postpones crypto taxation until 2022. America, listen up. And in a fitting display of gratitude, Celsius contributes the last 25,000 ETH to launch ETH 2.0. And it's a great article about giving back, and it's what I'm going to do right now, because I'm going to take a loan out on Celsius in this video. But before we get into that, let's quickly go over the market. So today is November 25th. Tomorrow is my favorite holiday, Thanksgiving, because I get to eat like a pig and uh, there's no repercussions. <laughs> so uh, congratulations uh, to everybody. We made it this far. If in the U.S., uh, happy Thanksgiving. But uh, here's what's going on the market. So right now, we've got uh, Bitcoin at 19.1. It's kind of teetering around 19.2, 19.3. But again, it's up massively 8.4 for the week. Ethereum dropped a little bit, but still it's around 600. I mean, you can't sneeze at that. That's fantastic. Over 23% for run for seven days. XRP, the big winner. Congratulations, XRP Army. You held strong. You held for a long time. And this is the uh, benefits of all that hard work. You're looking at 70 cents and it's, a, it's up a massive 130% for seven days, three and a half for 24 hours. So yeah, uh, that's uh, what's going on with them. Tether's Tether, 18 billion. They're just going to keep minting. Good for them. Bitcoin cash down a little bit. Chainlink, yeah, 15. What else do we got that's major? Stellar. Man, Stellar. I hold Stellar and I, I didn't know if Stellar would make it or if XRP would make it. It looks like they just kind of go in tandem. Uh, right now, 159% for the week, 19% over 24 hours, and it's a massive 22 cents. So, congratulations, Stellar holders. That is fantastic. 10% for Tezos, NEM. I don't know why, sure. Someone can explain that to me in the, in the comment section. That'd be great. <laughs> Filecoin, number 25. Again, this is still a good project. And I know people talked about how it was a scam, blah, blah. It's still a good project. I believe in some of the things and I really should invest into it, but I just haven't. Uh, Dash, Data, whatever else. 5.3. Ethereum Classic. Wow. Look at that. And then Theta. Ooh, hey, you know what? Theta, I'm almost approaching my uh, 10,000 node requirement. So uh, I'll just keep dollar cost averaging. Hopefully I can do that before it reaches over a dollar. So we will see. Anyhow, that's what's going on the market. Everything's good and fantastic. Let's break into the big stuff. All right, so this is what it's all about. What's going on behind the scenes? Why is there such a huge uh, boom for uh, Bitcoin? This is what we talk about on the channel a lot. But one of these things is that, hey, there's a lot of institutions coming into play. And uh, Coinbase, my favorite exchange, that's sarcasm, uh, has got a huge explosion of capital from who? Institutions. And when I read this, I'm like, this is pretty big. So Coinbase revealed explosion of capital. It's around 20 billion. And 14 billion of that was accumulated just since April. So imagine this. We had the Black Thursday event. We had the big March crash because of the coronavirus and everything was down. Everybody was talking about, ah, it's never come back. Well, guess what the institutions did? It's like, oh, we know it's coming back. And what we're going to do is when we just, you know, lick our wounds and uh, sell all the assets that we have to, to recover, we're going to buy Bitcoin. And that's what they did in April, not more than a week or two later. So congratulations, institutions. You did it again. Anyhow, Coinbase's head of institutional coverage, Brett Tapal, I think I said that right, Tapal. We'll just call him Brett. He's got a couple good quotes here. He says, it's a phenomenal time for crypto. Sometimes timing is everything. Uh, we have an explosion of activity. And speaking about timing, if you haven't watched yesterday's video, it was fantastic. It was me and Diddy from the Bitcoin family. This was the guy that sold all his belongings for Bitcoin in early 2017. And at the very end, we talk about his strategy, which is going all in, and my strategy, which is dollar cost averaging. And to talk about timing, this guy timed it like perfectly right, right at the beginning of 2017 when Bitcoin was around a grand. So yeah, it really does come down to timing because if they would have done the same thing at the very peak, it would have been a pretty hard situation until right now. I mean, he wouldn't have dumped it all at 20,000. I mean, who would do that? Who would do it right at 20,000 or 19.9 or whatever it was? But again, timing really is everything. If you haven't checked it out, I'll link it at the very end. It's a great interview. Thanks, Diddy, again for coming on. I learned a lot. So 
speaking of timing, Tate Paul says he joined in April this year. So again, he had great timing because he's in his position. He's looking like a genius because all the institutions are coming and going, take our money. So he says, I joined in April, and at that time, our assets, institutional, were uh, $6 billion. Today, we sent it $20 billion. So imagine just getting that in that position like, hey, uh, I'm, I'm here right now. Let's see what I can do. And then all of a sudden, you like, you know, almost do like a 4X. So good for him. Anyhow, earlier in the summer, we acquired an execution platform called Tagomi. Because I was thinking to myself, well, why did this happen in April? I mean, understandably, institutions want to get in, but they needed these on-ramps. Well, what Coinbase did, which is what great companies are doing, let's just say good companies do, is they acquire things all around them to make them grow even bigger. That's called leverage. And what they did was they picked up Tagomi. And what Tagomi was allowed them to do was, it says, overnight, it radically transformed our ability to cater to institutional clients that want to use smart order routing and algorithmic execution. So the stat that there's our trading volumes are 20 times what they were in the beginning of the year. So again, they did a smart thing. They picked up Tagomi. They said, look, institutions, come on in. They're like, great. We got all the different tools that we're used to. We don't know about Bitcoin. We like these tools. Bam. All of a sudden, you got $14 billion, uh, worth of more assets. So not a bad pickup. And he always states, week after week, we've had an explosion of incoming capital. And then it gets kind of boring right here because he talks about all the things that we always talk about, about Paul Tudor Jones and all these big institutional players and Drucken Miller and all these guys coming in. We know that. But this was interesting because he states what a typical day for him is like. And he says, by 9.30 in the morning, I had five separate institutional clients called to invest over $100 million each. Imagine you're just sitting there at your office and people are like dying to get in. Like, take my money, take my money. Like, all right, I'll get to you at some point. What a great problem to have. He explained that people sitting on the sideline are now looking at major banks, major accounting firms, hedge funds, endowments, and now PayPug in the space, concluding this. It's really unleashed a second wave of institutional adoption. So again, nobody wants to be first, but nobody wants to be last. And that's why everybody's rushing in. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, another quick article. So just so you know, uh, XRP is going to have an airdrop. It's called Spark and Binance, Bitstamp, and uh, of course, Voyager are going to be supporting it. That's pretty much the whole article, but I'll just read a couple of pieces. So Flare Network Airdrop is scheduled for December. When exactly December? It's on December 12th this year at uh, essentially right after midnight. So all you got to do if you have a Binance account or a Bitstamp or a Voyager is stick your XRP in there and don't do anything. That's it. And you'll get this spark airdrop. And, there, and I think that's one of the reasons why XRP is going up so massively because people are like, oh, I want to get this airdrop, airdrop. And Spark's going to allow XRP to have smart contract functionality. So that's a big thing. And of course, I mean, things are just uh, moving in the right direction for them. But just so you know, once this happened, deposits and withdrawals will be reopened after the snapshot is complete. Please note that trading of XRP will not be affected during the airdrop. And that's pretty much it. I don't know how big this is going to be. I don't know if this is going to be the next big thing. But I can just tell you, I think it's one of the drivers of uh, XRP uh, really going up in price. And uh, we'll see how it all works out. But again, don't do anything. Just leave your XRP in there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. That's it. Let me just think in the comments section. Let's move on. Okay. U.S. regulators, if you're watching my channel, which I know you are, listen up. So South Korea may postpone crypto taxation of 2022. This is how it's done, folks. This is how it's done. You get everything in line and then you launch things. This is also a uh, cautionary tale for all the DeFi projects. Get your ducks in a row and get everything ready before you launch thing and move and lose people's money. In this case, we're talking about taxation. So if you're not taxed in the country that you live in, the majority of you are going to get taxed at some point. So this is kind of a good article to see what's happening. So South Korea, again, does a great thing. What's happening? Well, this, the Strategy and Finance Committee of the South Korean National Assembly, uh, they're going to propose to uh, postpone cryptocurrency uh, taxation on transactions until January 2022. So they're going to be giving it a whole new year just to kind of accumulate and sell and do whatever you want to do in South Korea because they're not going to tax you. I can tell you, I should probably move over there. The authorities originally planned to include the tax in October 2021. Delay was caused by local crypto exchanges needing more time 
to create an effective tax infrastructure. So that's really the whole article. There's well, there's one good thing down here. It says uh, they're talking about Chainalysis, which is the crypto analytics platform. They did analysis because they, they want to know how big South Korea is. Because you know, my question was, well, how big are they? Who really cares if you got a tax or not? Well, Chainalysis determined this: that South Korea has one of the most active crypto economies in the world, ranking seventh worldwide on our global crypto adoption index and second in East Asia. Overall, South Korea ranks third in total crypto received. So they are no lightweights. But what these exchanges did in essence is they told the government, look, we're gonna push back. I know you wanna do the taxes, but you gotta need to slow your roll because we need to figure out exactly how to do this the right way because we don't wanna overtax people. No one likes that, right? Well. Welcome to the good old US of A. So what's happening right now, and this has actually been resolved a little bit, but this was an article, was this, a couple of days ago. For the second year in a row, the IRS is warning crypto investors they underreported their holdings. So this is from a man Sheehan. I gotta get him on the on the show. Gotta get him on the show. I will get him on the show. Great guy. Uh, crypto CPA, but he says it's come to my attention that some crypto holders are receiving CP2000 letters from the IRS. I don't know what that is, but it looks like it's one of those things where, hey, you didn't pay us a lot of money and you're getting things like this. You owe us, this one says 3,900 whatever. I don't know why they blocked out the, <laughs> the rest of it, but sure. And you may get something like this, but this is what, what it states is how much the IRS believes the users owe and provide due dates for payment. That always sucks. However, the users likely never realize these gains and don't actually owe these funds, CryptoTrader.tax said. And to further reiterate this point, uh, Coinbase has gone ahead and they said, hey, we're going to change up some of these forms because it's screwing everything up and the IRS is uh, uh, trying to overtax people. So they're not going to send out these 1099Ks. They're going to send out a 1099 MISC, I guess. And here's what's happening. The forms can sometimes show all transactions as generating revenue, even if some may have actually caused a loss, which is what I had. If you bought a coin for a dollar and sold it for 50 cents, your 50 cent loss would appear to be a gain. So that's a problem like right there. But this is just some of the things that they figure out as they go along. However, what South Korea said is like, look, we don't want to go through that hassle. Let's we'll just make sure we get as many things right and then we'll launch. So don't tax our customers, which is a fantastic thing. Uh, hey, maybe U.S. should try to look into that, but uh, it's not going to happen. We need to collect so much money. We're so in debt. Any elementary thing in the comments section? Let's move on to our last piece. So this was interesting because I had reported on how uh, Ethereum 2.0 might not launch in December because a week beforehand, they need to accumulate so many delegates or you had to report or get so much type of, uh, of Ethereum. And it didn't look like it was going to happen. Although it was 10% like a, like a couple weeks out. Then all of a sudden it was like 40% in one day. And then like overnight they hit the goal. So that makes me super bullish on uh, Ethereum. If they can do that type of thing, that's fantastic. But this is what Celsius did. They uh, donated the last, or they stay, they didn't donate, excuse me. They staked the last 25,000 ETH to launch Ethereum 2.0. It's pretty fitting. And it all ties up to this, this paragraph. It states, when Celsius first launched, we looked to Ethereum to learn how to create a thriving, robust community, said Alex Mashinsky, CEO of Celsius. We built our cell token on the Ethereum blockchain and use it to scale and become one of the fastest growing companies in crypto. We're proud to inaugurate the Ethereum 2.0 Genesis and contribute the last building block with 25,000 ETH from the Celsius community and be a helping hand to a company that helped us scale our own project. And to finish up, it says Celsius users can earn up to 7% APY on ETH. That's a little incomplete because you can, but you have to have a lot of Celsius in there. But right now I think it's around uh, 5%, so still not too bad. But anyhow, I thought it was a pretty great story about uh, giving back, you know, somebody who starts off with, uh, you know, one thing, they use they, they use Ethereum, they build their project, they like what they see, and then they kind of grow and they say, hey, to give you to your next level, like you did for us and helped us, we're going to give back. So uh, I, I had a little tip of the hat. Very nice. But of course, there is a component of there. I'm sure they're going to make a lot of money, but however, they can still make a lot of money anyhow. So I like to see these types of things. Also, if you haven't uh, checked out the interview between me and Alex, we went over a lot of different things and it really did restore a lot of my faith into Celsius uh, going forward. I'm still a little bit more cautious than I was before, but I think it's a great platform and it's going to drive me to do what we're going to talk about next, which is I'm going to take out a loan on Celsius because I haven't done it in quite some time. So I'm going to take out a loan and uh, I'll show you exactly how it's okay, done. So I want to take out a loan on Celsius. This is going to be pretty easy. So I just need to go to uh, the Celsius wallet itself. Take that paste it right here. Bam, I'm in. So the first thing I want to do is click on the Celsius 
the little icon in the bottom right hand corner corner and then everything pops up i got wallet transfer withdraw sell pay bar borrow i'll take that so right now you can calculate the loan interest um let's just go to get cash make this simple borrow dollars sure so it says how much you want to borrow i want to borrow i just want to keep it with round numbers today so let me just go for a thousand and it's going to ask me to choose the collateral so right here it's pretty cool because down here are all the different things that i have deposited well, actually, I don't have actually I don't have any dash, but I do have EOS and Zcash and Uniswap and BAT and all that stuff. So it's just gonna give me like options, like well, this is what you have, so choose one of these. So let's just choose uh, Ethereum. This makes it easy. And here's our options: one percent APR. It's pretty good, but I got to lock up six point seven. All right, uh, but I'm only I'm not paying that much then. If it's only one percent, three point nine five. But I got to lock up five, and then seven point nine five, uh, three point three. I have to lock up. So the question I have is, if I lock this up, I know Celsius is going to um, use this for their institutional uh, clients, and they're going to loan that out, uh, like they don't do it already. But then they're going to give me cash. So the question is, am I still going to earn interest on the Ethereum that I lock up? I don't think so. But uh, how cool would that be if I did, huh? Maybe I will. Let's see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the four percent APR because I'm gonna pay it back pretty quick. So this is pretty cool. So it says if you do it in six months, it's only twenty bucks you're gonna pay. Twelve months you're gonna pay forty. Eighteen, twenty-four, thirty, thirty-six. So three years you can go out to. And uh, of course we want to go for probably the shortest one. Let's just do six months. I just want to see how that goes. Uh, how long do I need to borrow a bank account? So now it's gonna go to the bank account. Let's see if it uh, gives me any personal information. I'll have to wipe away. So this would be all information you got to look up for your own bank. Let me take a look here. So now after you put your bank information, it's going to go for the basics. Uh, I've got to borrow a thousand, a grand, for five ETH. Uh, interest is going to be four percent monthly interest. Only three bucks. I'll take it. Total uh, twenty bucks over six months. And then of course you can get reduce your interest rate by five percent by paying out and sell. Yeah, it's okay. And this is the interesting part: ETH margin call. So if ETH drops below three hundred one dollars and seventy nine cents you will be required to add collateral to meet the minimum loan to value. So right now, Ethereum's at $600, so that looks pretty good. And also says you're gonna be liquidated at $245. If ETH drops below 245 and margin call has not been met, we will liquidate a portion of your collateral to, to cover the margin. So that's pretty good. I mean, look, 245, that's uh, that's quite a drop. And it, it doesn't say it's going to totally liquidate you. It just says, hey, uh, there's a portion at uh, 245. So yeah, let's do that, continue. Uh, Terms and conditions, and I'm just gonna say that and that, and wow, that's a lot of information. Let's request a loan. Uh, of course, 2FA, let me jump over here. Bam, take that, paste that right in. And look at that, loan created successfully. So just that easy, uh, a lot easier to go to the bank, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, that took, uh, what, a couple minutes? So not too bad. And then of course, the other question is, well, how do we do this as far as like uh, taking a loan out later on? Instead of paying taxes, just uh, take loans and loans and loans, then hopefully everything goes up. I think that could work pretty well, uh, depending. It just depends on, you know, if the market goes up. Again, if you took a huge loan out in December 2017, you'd have to cover a lot in, a, in 30 days time. But uh, if you did it at, you know, middle of 2018, you'd still be fine. So I guess it just depends. The big thing, I guess, would be uh, not to take out huge loans in the uh, as, as the market goes parabolic. And yeah, let's jump back. All right, that's it. So uh, to finish up, if you haven't signed up for Digital Asset News or Dan Teaches Crypto, it's a 100% free website, uh, super simplified, very easy. Try to condense a lot of information down to the basics of things that you should know. And in the members area, we break it down to five core components, uh, just the basics, the safety, how to not uh, get scammed and do all that nonsense, investing the different things that I try to teach and uh, talk about as far as dollar cost averaging, looking at the market, how to not get wrecked. Then we take a look at module four, different reviews and how to do your own reviews and the how do I section. I think it's the most popular module five, which is how do I buy Theta? How do I use Uniswap? How do I update the firmware on my Nano and all those different things. And also the table of contents is right here. So again, Dan teaches crypto, 100% free, is free, always will be free. And that's it for today. So if you like those types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up in your left and right. I'll let YouTube do its magic. I'll probably put the one up uh, with Diddy that we did, which is a pretty great one. And that's it for today. So thanks for sticking with me to the very end. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.